morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. Hello, friends. Glad to have you with us. Listen, we got some serious stuff going on here in Las Vegas. Uh, we filmed this on Friday. In fact, we almost always do our intro outros on Friday. Uh, yesterday, there was big time floods here in Las Vegas. Nothing to be joking about, nothing to be fooling around with. Um, ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the most dangerous things. In fact, we don't have a lot of dangerous things in <laughs> Las Vegas, but floods are one of them. Probably the top of the list, honestly. Yeah, we don't have tornadoes or hurricanes or some of the other things that other parts of the country and world have, but we do have flooding when we get a deluge of rain like we got last night on Thursday night. Yeah, and uh, we've been through a couple of them. Paul has even had to abandon a car uh, at one time. And, <laughs> I sure did. And, yeah, and had to walk home through them. They're very, very serious. If you're here visiting, uh, please do not be in your car. Please do not drive through flooded waters. Uh, it's very, very dangerous. Now, the other thing is, we've been sick all week uh, with Both colds. Us, yeah. yeah, we've been kind of uh, hunkering down here at home, and maybe that was a good thing. I think it was. <laughs> a lot of folks wanted to meet us. We were not, we didn't want to tell them. We said we just we got a summer cold, yep. and it hit us both at the same time. And we're just starting to come out of it now. And then, of course, the floods happened. And uh, uh, and now this is Friday, like I said, when we do this. And uh, they're talking about even more storms tonight. So I'm not sure what, what if there'll be an update on this on Sunday or not. Anyway, where are we going today? Well, we are headed <laughs> back downtown because after we did Binion's a couple weeks ago, we got such wonderful feedback from all of you and recommendations of other places to go. So we headed across the street and we went to the Four Queens. Oh my gosh, I'll tell you what, the Four Queens has a lot of history there, and I mean a lot of history, and when we come back from the video, we're going to tell you some of it, but right? Absolutely. All right, get ready everybody, because this adventure starts right now. Today we find ourselves back at the corner of Casino Center and Fremont under the canopy. Our destination is all that lies beneath that neon crown. The Four Queens opened here on Fremont back in June 1966 with just 120 rooms and just look at her now. This historic casino hotel occupies an entire city block in the heart of the action with plenty of direct access to the Fremont Street experience. In fact, they were actually partners in the creation of it back in the 1990s. So who are the Four Queens? They are builder Benny Goffstein's daughters. Michelle was the queen of spades. Bonita, the queen of clubs. Faith, the queen of hearts. And Hope, the queen of diamonds. On the third street corner is the patio bar, a perfect spot to enjoy a cold beverage and people watch. If you're hungry, the Wanataka walk-up counter is just inside the doors. And if there's a band playing on the 3rd Street stage, you've got a perfect view from right here. Before we go inside, let's walk around the block and get the lay of the land. How much do we like these crown inlays on the casino center side of the building? Standing on the corner of Carson, there's the Golden Nugget to the west. The Four Queens and the D to the east. <laughs> what a sweet spot to call home. The Four Queens offers free parking with validation if you are gambling or dining. From here, you can see the two 18-story hotel towers totaling 690 rooms. But maybe the best way to capture the whole footprint of the Four Queens is from the top of the Binion Steakhouse, where we just happened to be a couple of weeks ago. Around on the Third Street side is the Valet and Hotel drop-off area. This gorgeous covered entryway with its Victorian lighting and ironwork would fit in well with all those high-end resorts on the Strip. Let me tell you folks, it is beautiful in here.
step into the lobby and to the left is the gift shop and the check-in desk. Now here's something worth noting. The Four Queens is the only downtown hotel with no resort fees. Also in the lobby area is a convenient Avis car rental and the entertainment box office. In case you're wondering, this is a coral reef. And last but not least, look up. These chandeliers are the lobby's best feature. We mentioned earlier that there are two towers. The North Tower houses the standard rooms, 290 square feet. In the South Tower, you'll find the premium rooms, which are a little larger at 325 square feet and offer upgraded amenities. You can also book a Royal Suite or a Regal Suite if you need a little more elbow room and you've brought the family. Now, there's no pool on site, but the website encourages guests to visit the rooftop pool over its sister property, Binion's. The original Four Queens Casino back in 1966 measured about 20,000 square feet. Today's version is slightly bigger, just over 27,000. The property is owned by TLC Casino Enterprises, the same folks who own Binion's on the opposite corner. TLC purchased it in 2003 and upgraded the more than 1,000 slot machines. Their aim is to deliver high-quality, traditional Las Vegas gaming with slots, table games, and even a small sports desk. Inside the casino is a little food court, a single counter offering sandwiches, pizza, and ice cream. The original theme of the Four Queens was Victorian, and it's these light fixtures that still remind us of that era. They are a distinctive feature in this casino. In fact, even in other areas, the crystals and light bulbs above you are mesmerizing, very reminiscent of old Vegas. Now, this is breaking news on the Four Queens social media channels this week. Score yourself a sweet Ford F-150 if you win on a max bet. Back in 2007, the new owner's TLC finished up a big $20 million renovation which included this entertainment venue off the lobby, the Canyon Club. Today it's home to two live shows running Tuesday through Saturday. Mike Hammer is billed as comedy magic with an edge, and no two shows are alike. Expect non-stop improv with lots of family-friendly audience participation. The Late Show in the Canyon Club is Hypnosis Unleashed, featuring hypnotist Kevin Lapine and his comedy-infused show. This two-time Best of Las Vegas winner is for adults 18 and over. For a smallish casino, the Four Queens offers a handful of terrific dining options. Hugo's Cellar has been in this spot since 1973, and when you go down those stairs, expect a superb experience. Every one of those awards on the wall is well-deserved. The classic steakhouse menu has barely changed over the years, and the ambiance and service in this hideaway restaurant are unparalleled. Just next door, what is this line all about? Judging by the signage on the outside of the building, Magnolia's Veranda is the place to be for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So stay tuned because your breakfast with Paula awaits. 
popular local brew pub Chicago Brewing Company opened its doors here at the Four Queens as part of that 2007 upgrade. This sports-friendly spot is perfect for enjoying handcrafted microbrews. Appetizers, pizzas, and even a good cigar. Well, hello, my friends. I'm at Magnolia's Veranda at the Four Queens. It's uh, right about 8 a.m., and there isn't a table to be had. This place is packed. I did try to catch a couple pans without getting in people's faces so you could get the lay of the land. It's a very small, intimate little veranda overlooking the casino. So you aren't even going to believe what I ordered, something I've never ordered in our Breakfast at series. Wait till you see it. It's going to be finger licking good. Stand by. According to the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, 42% of visitors to our fair city make downtown a part of their itinerary. And this little gem, Magnolia's Veranda, consistently lands in the list of great cheap eats on Fremont. We just love the view of the casino. And these cool jazz art pieces on the wall. can order breakfast all day and there are always specials for lunch and dinner including their famous prime rib. Hello, my breakfast has arrived and you aren't even going to believe what I ordered. The first time ever, just for you, I ordered steak and eggs. It's a New York strip steak, six ounce, plus two eggs, hash browns, and toast. And I think it was $16.99 or thereabouts. This particular coffee shop is known for really terrific food and affordable prices downtown. All right, let's dig in. I got to cut into my steak. Turn my plate around. They brought me a steak knife. Without seasoning or anything, I'm going to take a bite. I ordered it medium. It's quite thin, so it's probably more like medium well. Let me take a bite. I want to talk with my mouth full. It's very well seasoned. Doesn't need salt, pepper, or anything. It's a little chewy, it's not super tender, um, but it is really flavorful and tasty. Big thumbs up. I'll take a little bite of my egg. I actually didn't even order scrambled. I really went off the rails today. I don't like over easy eggs. I don't like runny eggs. So, but I did get over hard. Warm, just the right amount of salt. Very, very good. And have myself some rye toast as well. There's jelly and jam on the table. I am very satisfied. Oh, wait a minute. Let me try the potatoes while you're still here. Take a little bite. They're well done hash browns. I like them well done. Crispy outside. Good, your typical hash browns. Not really flavored with anything. There's no onion flavor or anything. Very good. This is an amazing, humongous breakfast. Let me get busy on it. And we will leave you with this. As Paula was going back to her car after breakfast, she caught the Fremont Street Experience maintenance team working on the canopy above Circa. <laughs> As you know, we absolutely love this kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, I know they're doing a little bit more work on that canopy today. What do you think? My guess is a bunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't envy those guys and the job they have to do with all the cleanup for sure. Anyway, so what'd you think of the Four Queens? What'd you think? I ordered steak and eggs and I did that just for you because normally I'm not having New York strip steak at eight in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married 41 years and I never saw her have a steak it for was, breakfast ever. It was a first. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, just, uh, I'll give them a little uh, brief thing about, uh, about the 2nd and uh, Fremont Street. Right across the street was a hotel called Fremont. 
and, right? And uh, uh, across the street from that was a drugstore. It was called, I believe it was the White Cross. Yeah, White Cross Drugs. And Wayne Newton was just a, a young lad. I mean, he was just a teenager, right? Teenager. Playing yeah. at the Fremont Hotel. Well, guess where he went on his breaks? He would go to the White Cross and he would sit at the counter and get himself a soda. It had an old fashioned soda fountain and it was very old timey and it's kind of an urban legend that Wayne used to go yeah, there and enjoy a soda between sets, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he took a break. I mean, yeah. they were they were there. I think they did six shows a day. I mean, yeah. They did a so, lot. You know what that feels like. Uh, I've, I've done many of those, <laughs> especially here in Las Vegas. So uh, let's move ahead a, a few years and uh, let's talk about how and why they built the Four Queens. So White Cross Drugs actually went away in 1964 when one of the early casino magnates, another Benny, Benny Goffstein purchased the land and broke ground for what became the Four Queens. But before that, Mr. Goffstein had quite a history here in Vegas. He came here in the 40s, originally from Omaha, and he became president of the Las Vegas Club. And then later on, he was instrumental in a big up update to the Flamingo, and then he became president of the Riviera. So he was a big wheeler and dealer this on guy, the strip. Yeah, this guy was a big yeah. deal in town, and I mean, uh, not too many people know his name. No, he was actually a very low-key, quiet guy, as opposed to Benny Binion. Right. Um, but he was very instrumental, actually, and what I love about him was he understood the importance of getting people here, and he was instrumental in creating or convincing the airlines to do a nonstop from Chicago to Las Vegas, and also to make sure that all those Amtrak trains coming through were full of tourists. Absolutely. So, way the to go, Mr. Grofstein. Stopping and <laughs> spending money here in Las Vegas. Now, uh, let, well, let's get into the building of the Four Queens. Yeah, so fast forward to 64, he purchased the land, the White Cross drugs went away, and two years later, in June of 66, he opened the Four Queens, and you already know he named yeah. it after his daughters. Yes, and here's now here's the sad part about it. It was within a year after opening up the Four Queens, uh, he, he uh, passed away from cancer. He did. In 1967, how sad that was. But uh, we read some of the newspaper articles, and they really gave him a nice send-off here in town. I think folks who lived here at the time understood the importance of his contributions to Las Vegas. But he was a very, very big part of downtown Las Vegas. And uh, uh, and I know that a, a lot of you folks didn't had never heard of his name, but he did a lot of things for Las Vegas. He did. So we wanted to give him some props here today. And of course, uh, the Casino Hotel went out of the hands of the family, and by 1975, they had actually purchased up all the little storefronts all the way over to 3rd Street, so they had taken over the whole block I think by the Hyatt, that time. didn't Hyatt take it over? Yeah, or? it was Elsinore Hotels, and they were a division of Hyatt, and they owned it for a very long time as well. A um, couple other owners, and then TLC took over in 2003. So there you go, a little bit of history there on the Four Queens. What an interesting property. And I'll tell you another short little story. I came that close to working in the lounge, but I, I had to turn it down because I had something else that came up. So I never actually got to play in the Four Queens. But listen, folks, the Four Queens is such an old Vegas property. It hasn't changed all that much over the years, no. honestly. It's still kind of small and intimate. It's got, you know, the little restaurants. And, of course, Hugo Cellar has been there for, what, 50 years? Yeah, it's, 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 it's old, awesome. That's an old restaurant. But you yeah. know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, my friends, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people? Who are you? My name's Paula. Uh, the Paula. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been saving up a couple things. Um, I did want to tell you, believe it or not, we have more than 400 videos on our channel at this point. And so we've taken a little time recently to create some playlists that maybe make it easier for you to find a topic you're interested yeah. in. So not only do you have a playlist for the strip resorts and staycations, we now have one for downtown, and we also have one for the neighborhood locals casinos, which has been a popular topic here lately. Yeah, so check those out, right? <laughs> yeah, please check those out, and maybe it'll help you zero in on whatever you might be interested in. All right, my friends, I hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, we'll everybody. Bye.